Good morning. It's a snowy Tuesday here in Cold Lake, and I hope you are all well and safe. This evening we are having our book club meeting on Zoom, and I'd like to read you a selection from the book that we will be discussing, Homework, by Julie Anders. Mark Bro and Dee Dee Wood were choreographing The Sound of Music, and Erwin Costell was our music director. Having so loved our collaboration on Mary Poppins, I was delighted that we were all working together again. For the better part of March, we rehearsed and pre-recorded most of the musical numbers for the film. Bob, Saul, and our phenomenal production designer, Boris Levin, had already been to Salzburg for a recce to scout shooting locations. They had brought photographs and dimensions back to Mark and Dee Dee so they could begin working on the movements for each song. Elements of those locations, such as steps or the rim of a fountain, were marked out with colored tape on our studio floor. The seven Von Trapp children had already been rehearsing for a week when I arrived. They greeted me enthusiastically and I hoped that I could live up to their expectations. They were learning the choreography, working with a dialogue coach to affect a mid-Atlantic accent, absorbing the songs and harmonies and keeping up with their schoolwork. My heart warmed to each one for different reasons. Gentle Charmaine Carr, playing the eldest child, Liesel, was trying to navigate being both the teenager she had been cast as and the young adult she really was. Shy and handsome Nicholas Hammond, Friedrich, grew six inches during the shooting schedule, necessitating some creative framing when others were in a shot with him. Freckle-faced Heather Menzies, Louisa, had an endearing gravitas about her. She was circumspect and shy. Huggable Dwayne Chase, Kurt, all boyish exuberance and dimpled charm. Beautiful Angela Cartwright, Brigitta, was the most seasoned actress of the group, with a natural ease and authentic authenticity on camera. Sweet Debbie Turner, Marta, kept losing her teeth, but bravely soldiered on with prosthetics that gave her an adorable lisp. Cuddly Kim Carruth, Gretel, the baby of the bunch, was a pint-sized force of nature in her energy and confidence. We learned the choreography, running around, singing our heads off, and marching up and down the supposed steps. We were taken out to the back lot to practice our bike riding skills and to time our pedaling to the tempo of Do Re Mi. Pushing forward and pulling back rhythmically on certain music cues. There was so much going on those first few weeks. Costume fittings, hair and makeup tests, rehearsing and recording the musical numbers, not to mention getting to know the rest of the cast and crew. Dorothy Jeekins, one of the finest costume designers in Hollywood, had designed such films as Friendly Persuasion, South Pacific, and The Music Man. Her costumes for The Sound of Music were exquisite in their materials, texture, and authenticity. As I had done with Mary Poppins, I found myself absorbing the character from the outside in, sensing the nuances of Marta's personality from the images that confronted me in the mirror when I put on the nun's habit and the rough, shabby dress that even the poor didn't want. Dorothy said to me, I think once Maria gets married, she becomes more of a woman. Therefore, the soft, girlish dresses in the early part of the film gave way to more mature outfits, such as beautifully tailored suits, all of which helped me understand the evolution of Maria's character. Then there was the issue of my hair. Having cut it short during Mary Poppins to accommodate the wigs, I had kept it that way ever since. I had added a few highlights to enliven my mousy brown, but on camera the back of my head was still too dark.
Bob decided that I should have more highlights, which was fine with me. Unfortunately, there was a mistake in the color processing and I ended up with a bright orange mop. My hair had to be cut even shorter and what was left of it was dyed pure blonde. As luck would have it, this gave me a more Austrian look. Initially, it was a shock to be so yellow blonde, but I got used to it. Having it sh so short was actually more convenient, especially whenever I needed touch-ups on location. That close cut was also more authentic in terms of playing a nun, since most novitiates kept their hair short under the wimple. That's it for today. Uh, if you'd like to join us this evening, I'm going to put the link in the comments. Please tell me what you're reading this week, and I'll talk to you again.